Good morning all. I am Dr. Urmila, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics. I will be teaching you your open course Physics in Daily Life. It has got three modules. In that I will be teaching you module 2. And it has got three uh, two units. One is unit 3 motion and the other is unit 4 electricity. So, I will be teaching unit 3 motion and unit 4 electricity. So, today we will begin with the session unit 3 motion. So, you know what a motion is or what is it meant by. Okay. Now, motion means it is the change in position of an object in space as a function of time. Okay, suppose that an object is at position A at time T1 and suppose that it is at the position B at time T2. So, we have, we can say that the object has moved from position A to position B in a time span of T1 to T2. So, motion is nothing but change in position of an object in space as a function of time. We have got three different types of motions. One is translational motion that is uh, you reach your college from your home. So, you travel from your home um, to college. That's an example for translation motion. And the other one is rotational motion. That is, suppose that while you are dancing, you try to spin on your toe. So, spinning on your toe while dancing is an example for rotational motion. Now, another one is oscillatory motion. That is, suppose that you are going for a morning walk or you are going for a jogging then you s try to swing your arms as a part of your exercise so this swinging your arms while jogging or while walking is an example for oscillatory motion so here you have to study what motion is and the types of motion next is the difference between distance and displacement see the figure here there are two points a and b a is the initial position and B is the final position and object is moving from A to B. It can follow either path 1 or path 2. So, this path followed by the object is actually termed as distance or distance is a quantity that refers to how much ground an object has covered during its motion or you know that distance is nothing but it is a product of speed and time. But whereas displacement is different see how displacement is defined it is actually the shortest distance between the point a and the point b so we can define displacement as it is a vector quantity because it has got both magnitude and direction whose length is the shortest distance from initial to final position of a moving object so distance is only a scalar quantity it tells you how much ground an object has covered during its motion whereas displacement is the shortest distance from initial to final position of a moving object. Next is about velocity and speed. Velocity first of all uh, please keep in mind it is a vector quantity that is it has got both magnitude and direction whereas speed is a scalar quantity that is it has got only magnitude. Velocity is defined as rate of change of position vector whereas speed is distance traveled per unit time. The definitions are here. Okay. Now what is instantaneous velocity? Instantaneous velocity means velocity at a particular instant of time or it is a velocity at a particular time is the rate of change of position vector at that instant. Suppose that if dx is the displacement during a very small time interval dt then this instantaneous velocity is dx by dt whereas average velocity of a moving object is defined as displacement that is delta x uh, divided by time taken for that displacement that is delta t that is here delta x is the difference between its initial position and final position and delta t is the time taken for the object to have that displacement okay so keep in mind velocity instance velocity is uh, the velocity at a particular instant of time whereas average velocity is the displacement divided by time taken for that displacement so you have to study what 
velocity is what uh, this instantaneous velocity is expression then the definition for average velocity is this expression now i will tell you an example suppose that you are traveling in a car and its speedometer shows 20 km per hour 40 km per hour and so on so that actually means that uh, it is actually the speed of a car at that particular instant of time that is they are all instantaneous speed whereas for average speed suppose that your car took two hours to reach to cover a distance of 84 kilometers then the average speed will be 84 by 2 that is 42 kilometers so that is average speed now when will that average speed become average velocity it becomes only when you define a direction that is your car is traveling at an average speed of 42 km per hour from what time to your now then that average speed will become average velocity why because you are describing both magnitude as well as direction next is acceleration when the velocity of an object increases with the time it is acceleration if it decreases with the time it is deceleration now the uh, definition for instantaneous acceleration is rate of change of velocity with respect to time it is given by a is equal to dv by dt rate of change of velocity with the rate of change of velocity with the time dv by dt so d by dt you keep it as such then velocity we already know is a rate of change of displacement with the time so it is dx by dt so together we can write d square x by dt square so velocity v is dx by dt whereas acceleration is a is d square x by dt square that is velocity is rate of change of displacement with the time whereas acceleration is rate of change of velocity with the time now next is um, average acceleration is defined as a change in velocity divided by time interval during which the change occurred this is this expression acceleration is a vector quantity its unit is meter per second square we know the unit of velocity it is meter per second okay please keep in mind a body is said to be in uniform or constant acceleration if it if it is the motion in which the velocity of object changes by equal amount in equal time period just study the definition only then for example a car starting from rest is an accelerated motion when you apply a sudden brake to the car it will be deceleration now just uh, a note accelerometers they are just devices used to measure the proper acceleration of any object for example in, in mobile phones we have using uh, accelerators that is for detecting the orientation of the phone screen rotation that all you know very well and accelerators based on sensors are also used in earth detectors now today's last topic is about force force you know it is an interaction between two or more objects there are two types of forces contact force and field force as the name suggests contact force is involve physical contact between objects whereas field forces do not involve any physical contact between two objects instead it will act through empty space examples for field forces are gravi uh, force of gravitational attraction between two objects force of attraction between a magnet and ion, force of attraction or repulsion between two charged particles, etc. All the other four fundamental forces like gravitational, electromagnetic, strong nuclear force, weak nuclear force are all examples for field forces. Okay. Now, force is a vector quantity. Why? It has got both magnitude and direction. Its unit is kilogram meter per second square or Newton. So, what is force? What are the two types of force and examples? So, that you have to study unit also. So force is a vector quantity, it has got both magnitude and direction and for example I will give you an example. So suppose that you are sitting on a bench and you are trying to push a person near you. He will fall down and in which direction he will fall down in the direction of your push. Okay, now I will give you another example. Suppose that you are sitting in the middle, one person is sitting at the right of you and the other person at the left of you. Suppose that he is pulling, both of them, they are pulling your arms in opposite directions with equal force. You are in the middle just remember that and your arms are being pulled by the two persons sitting on both sides of you in with equal force they are pulling your arms in opposite directions with equal force well, then what will happen to you what about your position you will be in the position where you are that is you will never move anywhere you will be 
the position where you are y because you are acted upon by two equal and opposite forces so those forces will nullify each other that is they will get cancel each other as per law of vector addition of forces okay that is also called as parallelogram law so you will sit in the place where you are suppose that if one person is stronger then he you will definitely move along the direction of the stronger person you can understand it very well about the nature of force okay so i think uh, this is enough for today so i will be uploading this uh, lecture class along with that i will upload a reference text also not the full text but those parts uh, that i have covered today so when you study you can go through both my lecture class as well as the reference note here i have presented before you just the main points uh, that you will have to study uh, from your exam point of view and you can find these points in your reference text also the same points is being described in your text so while uh, learning you please go through both my lecture class as well as the reference note uh, the same thing i have told here so for vast reading you can go through the textbook also okay so i think uh, today this is enough okay thank you